Hey guys, uh, I am back with episode 13 of American Gothic for you. This one is called Resurrector, um, which I think sounds kind of funny in my accent. Resurrector. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's a, an A and a B plotline in this one. Um, so it's fairly straightforward. And um, yeah. I guess the title kind of gives it away, but we have two plots about, sort of about people being resurrected, which I guess maybe gives it away a little bit, but anyway, let's dive in. So we open on, um, it's Greg Travis, who is a stand-up comedian. I don't know if some of you will recognize his face, but he plays a guy called Mel, and the setup, the pre credit sequence almost looks like he's being interviewed. Um, so basically we learned that he and his wife work in radio and, uh, initially they felt like radio was the, they have a talk show and they felt like that was the, uh, best place for them. Like they could kind of go really far with it, but it's the nineties. And so TV is bigger than radio now. Um, and so they're trying to move into TV, but, um, it's really his ambition more than hers. And so far they've been turned down because they're not sort of. I guess basically just because they're not good looking enough. Um, so yeah, we find out that Mel is actually asking the sheriff for help, but the sheriff's kind of like just, I don't know, you know what the sheriff's like. He's not really interested in money and he's like, you don't have anything to bargain with. Like basically you don't have anything that the sheriff wants. Um, and obviously there's kind of some foreshadowing here that uh, the sheriff knows something bad is going to happen to Mel. Um, and Mel threatens to take down the sheriff, which is like, not a good idea. <laughs> so we're all set up for some fun and games after the credits. Um, so I'll give you the rest of that plotline first. Uh, basically, um, it sort of seems like they don't have the happiest relationship. The two talk show hosts, they're kind of, I don't know. Um, but the, the first radio show we see, somebody calls in, I think it's Selena, and she hints that she's having an affair with Mel. Um, and then we open on a sequence where a woman calls into the radio show because she wants help. Basically, in her house, her husband Lance is shooting at Deputy Ben, so it's all being, like, caught on air. And Ben was called because, um, initially this guy was apparently shooting at the postman. And I was like, man... It must be really tough being in the postal service. Like, just just be nice to those people that deliver your mail. Anyway, um, Gloria once says, you know, we should tell the wife to get out, and Mel says no because he wants to capture the drama on air, and he sort of you get the idea that he has a bit of a plan. Um, so Sheriff Ben ends up busting into the house, and it's all caught on air, and he has to shoot Lance because it sort of Lance is about to shoot him. Um, but it's all broadcast and later at the hospital Mel approaches Ben like really aggressively and um, we learn that Lance is going to recover but Mel sort of is clearly setting Ben up for a fall like asking him you know did you have a search warrant and does Lance owe money to the sheriff and he sort of captures some stuff that's a bit incriminating potentially that Ben says. So then uh, the sheriff goes to see Gloria and she's kind of apologetic and the sheriff warns her about Mel's ambition and hints that he's not faithful um, and yeah then we have a little scene where Selena goes to see Ben at the bar and he's not happy to see her um, but she sort of offers support. There's kind of a hint that um, Maybe Selena wants some kind of relationship with Ben. I'm not sure if the sheriff's setting that up or not. Um, and he makes a joke. She offers sort of like emotional support to Ben and he makes a joke about dismembering Mel. And I'm like, that's kind of bleak. <laughs> um, anyway, Mel is still threatening the sheriff. Um, and now he has like a tape, basically, the sheriff wants. So the sheriff's like, you can have your TV show if you lose your wife, because basically uh, the sheriff kind of hints that the reason they're not progressing is because the wife isn't pretty enough or something like that. 
trying to like destroy their relationship. And he hints that Mel has to kill his wife or he'd have her like hanging around and, you know, being divorced from her would create drama. But if she died, then that creates like some kind of positive, um, something they can kind of spin for the TV show. Um, so yeah, later Mel is late for the, uh, for the radio show and, um, Gloria has made the theme of the show that day infidelity. So that's really subtle. Um, apparently he didn't come home the night before, but he denies that anything happened and she kind of sets him up to take her out on a boat, which I think is a terrible idea for a date. And, um, it's just an all around bad idea. <laughs> But then I'm not, I get seasick. I'm not a fan of boats. Um, so yeah, then later Selena's at the sheriff's office. She's in on the sheriff's plan, whatever that is. Um, ben isn't happy to see her. I think he feels like the sheriff's setting him up with Selena and then is going to get jealous and get back at him in some way. It's kind of interesting. I wonder if it's foreshadowing something in the later episode. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, Buck has a plan. So... Mel's like reluctant to kill his wife, um, but he does end up taking her out on the boat. Um, so <laughs> I was initially thinking that, you know, this isn't like the cute date scene in um, The Little Mermaid. Um, you know, they're in the boat and there's like the song and I'm like, I feel like, I don't know. But then I realized this scene actually reminds me of the Liz Elizabeth Taylor movie, A Place in the Sun. So basically, um, they're out rowing on, and it's not sort of going very well. And then, um, Gloria stands up in the boat, falls into the water and Mel has to make a decision about whether to rescue her and pull her back in the boat or let her drown. And he kind of take, I guess, takes it as a sign and just leaves her there and he rows back in. But he tells a big story about um how he like went in to save her and stuff like that so like that whole situation is very much like um a place in the sun anyway um so he gives the sheriff the tape and they talk about his tv career um and then there's a little final scene where he's at the radio station this seems like kind of cheesy but you know it's fine um, Selena steps out of the shadows and kind of asks him some questions and Mel talks about how he made a statement that he tried to save his wife but he's a bit drunk and he admits he wanted his wife to die, he admits that he killed her and suddenly all the lights go on and we realize like he's, it's being televised and he's on air and you know, I don't know. I mean it's a good moment but it just, it just seems like, I don't know, just a bit over the top but um, Gloria is there. So the bookend from that opening sequence at the end here is that it's like he's being interviewed again, like Gloria's kind of pretending to interview him, I guess, asking him about um, how he tried to kill her. So his career is obviously ruined, and I guess maybe hers is on the ascendancy. Um, and it turns out the sheriff took Gloria into helping him, um, in her mind, like test out Mel. Um, and he's like, yeah. So that's kind of that. Um, don't mess with the sheriff, basically. The B plot uh, is about Caleb and Merlin, which is always good. It was really nice. I was surprised because Loris Holt is back and I was like, she's the woman who was given um, like custody or whatever of Caleb. But it's like she's just not been around for a bunch of episodes and like somebody else has been making breakfast and stuff so it's a bit confusing but she is still here so that's nice and she's got a little vintage style apron on while she's cooking breakfast which um i think is quite adorable so basically caleb's kind of upset um merlin's kind of disappeared from the plot since she since the rebirth episode which i think it was just the previous one but um i think he feels like she didn't say goodbye and um, it's upsetting. So Loris suggests he do something to symbolically let Merlin go and to just kind of like have a second funeral as a way of letting go. And she shows him an old like family scrapbook 
and um, how, tells him how to have like a second funeral like the one that she had for a relative that was struggling to pass on because she feels like Caleb's holding on to Merlin and that's maybe not good for either of them. So um, he gets Boone to help him and they draw a map and they make an invitation. They have their favorite snacks. Um, I feel like Boone is a really good friend because he clearly does not want to do this, <laughs> but he's being there for Caleb and I, I respect that. Um, so later that night they just burn everything and um, Boone asks if he's going to put the locket in the flames that was Merlin's, but Caleb isn't ready to do that. Um, after Boone leaves, we hear Merlin calling for help and we get these dodgy CGI flames. <laughs> They're really, really like, I don't know. I mean, I'm laughing at the special effects in this show, but actually they're kind of quaint and it kind of works. Um, but I'm still going to laugh at them anyway. Um, so yeah, she comes through the flames and grabs onto him and begs for help and it's very spooky. He runs to his halt and asks her for help and she just kind of looks worried and then suggests that Caleb just leave Merlin alone. So clearly she knows something. Um, she mentioned with the scrapbook that she didn't want Caleb to just, like he couldn't borrow it because she didn't want him to just go through it. And um, so the next day he goes and finds it and um, he's kind of looking for a clue of what to do next. He's um, obviously worried about Merlin being stuck somewhere suffering. And uh, he sees a thing about brimstone and he kind of innocently asks the doctor over breakfast, like, what is brimstone? And he's told that it's sulfur, which is a common thing that people have in their garden sheds, apparently, in Trinity. Um, maybe people do. I don't know. It's probably good for your garden. Um, Buck just turns up and is like, what do you want it for? He breaks the jar of sulfur and warns him that, um, I guess, what he might raise by doing this thing with the brimstone um, could bring back something dangerous, but um, not sure. You know, you just can't trust anything Sheriff Buck says, but anyway. So later, Caleb scoops up a bit of the brimstone like off the floor and he um, asks his mom for help. Her photo is in the locket and then he puts it on the, uh, the coals from the where he burnt everything the night before. So some CGI smoke comes out, Merlin is there, and um, yeah, it seems like something isn't right. She has this like weird voice thing, it makes her all spooky. So uh, I guess we'll see later on if um, it really is Merlin or not, because that's the end of the episode. But I was just thinking in this episode, uh, Caleb's meant to be about 10. Um, at the start of the series, and I was just thinking the actor that plays him, Lucas Black, like, is looking a little bit older in this episode, so kids grow up so fast, don't they? Um, <laughs> and that's basically Resurrector. There's the two plot lines there, and um, yeah, I think it's a good one. I feel like um, it's nice to see Loris Holt back. It's nice to see Caleb doing some fun stuff with his little grumpy eyebrows. And um, I always like, for some reason, these plot lines where somebody messes with the sheriff and then he just messes with them. I don't know why I find that, I don't know, just so entertaining. I think he's such a good character. So that's where we are.